This is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast to contain spoilers, but we can't imagine you care if you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers. There's no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. Triangle of Sadness. Written and directed by Ruben Osland is a black comedy that follows a young couple incapable of being in a proper relationship, among other things. An experience on a luxury cruise proves their shortcomings can hardly be held against them by the veteran upper class. It's nominated for three Academy Awards, Best Picture, Best Director, Ruben Osland, Best Original Screenplay, Ruben Osland. It's a 72 on Rotten Tomatoes with a runtime of Two hours and 29 minutes in some other countries. The film is called Sans Filter for No Filter. How do you feel about that? Do you prefer that title or do you like Triangle of Sadness? Uh, I prefer Triangle of Sadness. I think that, that the No Filter thing isn't a bad idea, but I also prefer Triangle of Sadness. Yeah, I like I like Triangle of Sadness. And of the Best Picture uh, nominees in this year's category, it has the quickest Leo point uh, of any of them. It's like the first five minutes of the movie, you get the, uh, the Leo the, point where they say the title of the movie. You do not wonder where the title comes <laughs> Definitely from. Definitely not. You do not have time. Well, you do, but like not... Not like what part of the movie was it referring to? You know which part it was referring to, but like the actual triangle of sadness, it makes you wonder. It's layers to it. <laughs> yeah, the real triangle comes later in the film. Uh, I love this movie, and I am so deeply mad at it, and so <laughs> deeply mad at Ruben Osland because it is a three act film. Mm -hmm. And it has two perfect acts. The first act, it doesn't need to do much to be perfect. It serves its job. It introduces the characters. Its second act is so bloated and takes up most of the movie, so much of the movie spending time on characters and things that are the worst parts of its mo of the movie and do not require such attention. You've seen this, contains spoilers, if you haven't seen it, whatever. It's, as I said, it's about a couple, it's a, uh, an influencer slash model who's dating a model. They go on this luxury cruise. Uh, he wants to turn this into a real relationship. She's like, ah, oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'll just end up being a trophy wife someday. They go on this luxury cruise and you see that, hey, surprise, surprise, it's a movie in 2023. All the rich people are very vapid. It takes an hour. They spend an hour and four minutes on the second act, which is the cruise where you're, see, you're seeing all the rich people. They're going about their experience. I'm watching a movie in 2023. I know that if you show me rich people, especially a black comedy, what your opinion of these people probably is. And you're, yes, you're, you're making them out to be very incapable, very dumb people that by the time the shit really hits the fan... They don't know what they're doing. You could have done that instead of an hour and four minutes. You could have done that in half the time while still having the great parts of that second act. Yeah, I, I, I largely agree. I, I think that the, the middle part is very bloated and uh, it is an excruciating watch, particularly the captain's dinner scene. What the, do you mean? I for, what <laughs> The captain's dinner scene might be the most excruciating but memorable part of any movie uh, in this past year, it was disgusting. It was outrageous. It was uncomfortable. It was deeply hilarious at points, but it was also, I think, far too much, which I think is kind of the point. Like they, they really wanted to bash you over the head with the hyperbole of that of that whole uh, ordeal. But you're right. I mean, there's a lot of things that could have been cut in this movie. While this movie is like very long. By the end, I thought that it was worth it. And yeah. uh, when, like during during the uh, the captain's dinner scene, there was a real point for me, like, what the fuck am I doing here? Why am I watching this? What is the point of this? And it it is kind of the same feeling that I got with the first hour or so of, of, of Tar, where it's like, all right, where is this going? Uh, but the difference difference between tar in this movie is that it lands the plane in incredible fashion with a third act that makes me forgive all of the pain that it put me through in the first half so you're saying tar needed pirates yes yeah pretty much this movie and that second act are so long that by the time the movie gets really good 
I worry, and I've, I've seen this movie twice, and the first time I kind of felt this way, by the time the movie gets really good, the viewer may have subconsciously eliminated the possibility of it being a good movie. I, I was there. Like, I was kind of there. I was like, there's, there's no way that I'm going to think that this is a good movie. There's no way that I'm going to think that this is be- best picture worthy. But again, it landed the plane so fucking well that I was like, yes, absolutely. This might be the most heavy-handed satire ever. Like, there is so much stuff that you're like, even by showing that character, I get it. What, do you, what do you want to get rid of? Oh, my God. Like... like the all of the the captains captain stuff with like the Marxist and, and I know that no, it serves a Dimitri point. stays. Dimitri saying but, but the they, ship is they, sinking on the PA is the best so, part of any movie so, so ever. So funny, but it's also like they spend so much time on that. The the rich woman insisting that the help get in the water. Well, the, that that I ended up appreciating because of the dinner scene. It makes you it like they say like uh, the food is going to go bad. Yeah. So the combination of the food going bad and uh, the captain being a drunk and insisting that they hold the captain's dinner on the day where there's the worst weather and the boat is rocking like crazy. The combination of those two things explains why it is so outrageously over the top with everybody getting sick. The woman with dementia. You could spend one second on yes, her. Yes, definitely. The, I mean, the, it, the, there ends up being a fun payoff with the uh, the the war dogs essentially that that are on there but so much of it every single scene that you're going to do there just make that scene half the time or in the case of some of them just eliminate them as long as you use that again it's an hour and four minutes they spend on that boat if you just use it to continue to show a little friction between yaya and carl the two main characters introduce Dimitri. So by the time the captain's dinner scene happens, you're like, you know who he is when he starts acting up. And then really, other than that, I mean, you get Yorma for a couple of minutes and that is a great scene because you do get to hear the fantastic Lady Hear Me Tonight by Mojo, best use of a song in a movie this year. All of that other stuff though can be shorter. It can be so much shorter. Could have done way less of the woman sliding across the floor while spewing out of both ends. Could definitely have used less of um, like people just like trying to choke down their dinner. I'll allow for trimming the captain's dinner scene by like four minutes, but not much more. <laughs> I, I do like the captain's dinner is just they also very gratuitous yeah and they they also needed to maximize their woody harrelson screen time so that they could put him on the poster yes they gave him the and woody harrelson and by the time woody harrelson's out of that movie you're like thank god i need (laughs) a new movie and as you said you get to the third act which is incredible abigail what a character the dynamic between all of them fantastic the reveal at the end just freaking perfect it leaves you with good questions not even a reveal just uh the confirmation the cliffhanger. No, I'm saying the reveal of where they oh, are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's very... It's irony-laden. But as you watch it a couple of times, you're like, oh, yeah. They're <laughs> kind of clearly where I think they are. But it's fantastic. It leaves you with so many questions about Abigail's motives. Uh, the triangle of sadness thing, obviously, it ends up being a love triangle thing. The characters of Yaya and Carl and awesome. their dynamic fucking rock the fact that this movie starts with carl being heartbroken as yaya says whatever i'll just become a trophy wife at some point and then you come to find that the second carl's back is anywhere near up against the wall he essentially volunteers himself to be a trophy wife is amazing i mean i I tweeted about this and i tweeted that like my my experience with this movie is essentially like the patriots falcons super bowl where uh like the first the first two thirds or whatever i was not enjoying it whatsoever and i was like oh fuck this is this is excruciating but the last third is so good that it makes me uh think fondly of the entire thing and i can go back and watch it and appreciate it more knowing where it's gonna go uh but i also think that like somebody when I when I tweeted that, somebody replied immediately. Was like, I watched that movie. I didn't understand what it was about. What a waste of time! If you don't understand what this movie is about, it's not for you. It has one of the strongest, if not the strongest, 
themes and like um i guess banshees probably has like a, a, an extremely strong theme but the avatar theme, strongly has the theme of water so. <laughs> that is true uh the themes in this movie are very heavy heavy-handed and very strong and if you don't get those you're lost yeah you're, no, you're kind it, of you're kind of a lost soul here it, it, maybe they can be too much for you which is why i find it funny that i did enjoy it so much because it was very very over the top and they spend time, again, explaining things. And also, while I'm hating on the second uh, act, the second act doesn't establish or develop any of these characters. None of them get developed until they end up on the island, really. All you get is their backstory, mm -hmm. and you see them doing stuff in ways that show you that they're very vapid people. Yeah. But again... That all kind of goes without saying, and you already showed me a couple of times. Why do I have to keep seeing that? But I think that some of it is necessary to kind of hammer you over the head so that you really dislike these people, so that when they get to the island, you kind of appreciate the way that things are flipped on, on their head. So, like, that part, I do agree that it can be trimmed, but, like, the themes of, of like, of power structure and, uh, like, class dynamics is so important to establish. And I feel like they did a good job establishing it in the first two thirds. Um, and then really flipping it on its head in the third. You said that you didn't love the first two thirds of the movie. I'll implore you to not sleep on the first act. No, the first I, act was great. I think that to get something captivating out of who pays the bill is fantastic. It's like if, you went to see a comedian and they killed with airline jokes. We were like, if you can get something yeah, yeah. out of something as trite as that. No, that's not what I mean by I you're captivating. That's not me. what I mean by like I didn't like the first act. I was I by two the, thirds in, you're like, I don't the, like what this is movie. the no, yeah. like well that and like the first two thirds of the movie don't tell you what it's about. You know, like you're you're wondering where it's going. You're wondering what the point is. So you don't really find that out until the, the, the last act of the movie, which is why by the second act, I looped them two together and was like, where, what are we doing here? This is probably the sentimental favorite of the Best Picture nominees. It uh, is the only, fortunately, it's the only Best Picture nominee that lost its star two, three weeks before the movie came out. Uh, the beautiful Charles B. Dean, who plays Yaya, and what you texted me as you were watching it, and I you I don't know if you knew this was a dead person yet, but you were Did like, not. don't like this Yaya person. Well, I didn't like the and, character. Not to say I didn't I mean, like the I, actress. I, I loved the character. Like I, as a person, obviously you don't love them, but right. I like, loved the character. And uh I obviously, like after the movie, I'm like, who are these people? I love them. And yeah, when I got the Charlby Dean was a South African actress. Yeah. She uh, ha she was feeling a little under the weather. She had a procedure years ago because she was in a car accident that got her spleen removed. So she'd gotten something that you can legitimately get from like the wrong dog yeah, licking I saw you that or it something. Can get it from like a dog lick that it, can get you give you an infection. Told her fiance, "Hey, I'm not feeling so hot. You better take me to the hospital." And died. Horrible because truly we would be talking right now about like all right, so this is Ruben Oslin's, I believe, English language directorial debut. Who are we going to see from this? And if I had one pick, it would be yeah. it would be Charlby Dean. Well, them two. The, yeah. the 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 couple i would say like Carl, they're they're gonna get their flowers yeah. at, at the oscars and they're gonna like she would have crushed on the red carpet like i think that that, that there would have been kind of a star born here so it's yeah. really really devastating for that to happen especially um like right before you're gonna like gonna get your big break also lastly and i know this is one's going longer than we're supposed to be going but uh i would not think a movie could do the fellas more than banshees did when those boys oh, man. get their hands <laughs> on those whistles Ooh! personally i kind of have a thing with my friends where we just don't make fun of each other anymore and sometimes i kind of miss it uh these guys have lost everything their money which is the only claim to anything they have is no longer good they are screwed and they still are like should we raz the fellas? Yeah, it's so funny that like these uber rich people that like are established as the worst people, the worst vapid people in the world, they get everything taken away from them. And then they're just like, the vibes are all time high. It's crazy. <laughs> oh it's my God. Awesome. When Yorma 
kills the deer and he kills the deer and he he hits it over the head. That wasn't a deer. That was a donkey. Oh, I'm sorry. Donkey. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, alphabetically very close. He uh, <laughs> hits the donkey over the head. He goes, he looks back like, did I do well? And they, they're giving him those. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> and, then you, go. <laughs> and then I forget her name, but the uh, the head of like the service staff there is like, oh, my God, it's uh, still alive. And they're like, what? And Yorma sees that he did not successfully kill this donkey. Uh and then it just begins to cry, and they go and like they pull him away. The vibes are so good. I love them. I, I for as long as this movie is, and as tough as the first two acts were, by the time you get to the third act, you are like, please let this go on forever because this is the fucking and best. And that's another point I want to make. I would not touch one second or add one second to the nineteen minute first act. I would not touch. Add or subtract one second. I don't like. I don't even want more of the final act. I would. Take I more like of that the final act. just as it is. And if you end up doing twenty minute first act, half hour second act, forty five minute uh, th- th- final act. I don't think that this movie gets told nearly as well if it's done fi- in under tw- two hours. Mm, give, give me you- two fifteen. Well, remember, there is the uh, you can't add all those up to think that that's the final number because there is the uh, beginning that's I don't know like ten minutes or something like that. True, yeah, that's fair. Um, listen, if there is a radio edit of this movie, Ruben, my guy, love you, pulling for you, not pulling for you to win, but Ruben, if there is a radio edit of this movie, it is. My second favorite of the best picture noms. I shit you not. I think I think you're you're probably right. I'm probably there with you. I don't know. I mean, maybe my third. I Might thought that Banshee's, I was going... Top Gun and this movie. Okay, so I thought that I I thought you would basically disagree with my feelings on this completely. I thought no. you would gen- generally agree with a sentiment of like it's lopsided. It can be aimless at points. I didn't think that you would also love it though. It man, it would be right behind Banshees if with the proper radio editing as is i consider this movie to be and i don't say this disrespectfully there are some movies that are nominated to win Mm -hmm. a movie gets nominated you say "Ooh, that could win best picture some movies just got to be in the category it's like the people that are, are an american idol that make the top 10 and you're like ah you're there so somebody can come in 10th mm-hmm. this movie i says well i love my heart is Best Picture Chum. And there have been those over the years. Arrival, The well, Father, uh, the uh, Ford Nightmare Alley, Ferrari. Ford versus Ferrari. Like those are there because But you don't really take them seriously as a as a nominee. Like it's like if this was eight nominees, you wouldn't be here. Yes. Um I agree, but I also Although if um, I had to make like a top eight, I'm probably finding a way to squeeze this in there because I, I still do love it, despite my love-hate relationship. I, I also think that this is, uh, for all intents and purposes, like the most discussable movie of the bunch. Yeah. Like, Banshees, as you can say, you, like, you're having a discussion about Banshees at a bar, and you're, you're just talking about how much you love it. This movie, I think you have an ability to have, like, an hour-long conversation about each part of the movie. I mean, we're going longer on this than we've gone on, exactly. on, on any other podcast about the Best Picture nominees. So, uh that in itself is impressive to me, and it's something that I love in movies. Like the the discussability of movies, um, for better or for worse, makes me give more credit to that film. I put it on the list of must sees of the best picture noms. And once I saw it, and what I'd get the hey, what's streaming? What should I watch? Things I'd say I, I don't. Triangle of Sadness. Oscars are next week. See this. It's you might be mad at me afterwards, but I it's want more you to of an see experience. And I'll tell you what. Sitting on this until we recorded this was very tough. I know you got you got a, a a jump on tweeting about it, and I saw a couple of the responses, and I was like, I'm not looking at any of this. I like my head's going to explode. I need to get this all out. Mm-hmm. Great, imperfect, bloated at times, aimless movie. What more could you ask for? Triangle of sadness, baby. <laughs>